Next, from Springfield, as we near the 15th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attacks, we talked to Linda Brookhart, Executive Director of the State University Annuitants Association, as she recalls taking a tour of the White House during the attacks, as well as the mood of Washington, D.C. in the days afterward. This runs about 10 minutes. Linda Brookhart, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. And we'll start off by saying to those who don't know, you're a board member, but the reason uh, I should say a board member of the Illinois Channel. The reason we're talking to you today is hard to believe. This September 11, 2016, marks the 15th anniversary of the attack of 9-11 in New York and Washington. Most Americans saw it happening on TV, but you were actually in Washington that day uh, and visiting the White House. What were your experiences on 2011-2001? Or 9-11, I'm sorry, 2001. Surreal, for one thing. Um, we had just, I was out there with a group called the National Taxpayers Conference, and uh, we had just done a tour of the White House. We were to have a little bit of time in between before we went to the old executive um, office building for a briefing. And um, I was standing outside taking pictures of everyone going in, and being the last one in, of course, somebody was holding the door yelling, come on, Linda, get in here. And as soon as I stepped in, security was rushing everybody back out again. I ended up in the middle of the street um, and just happened to look up. I was talking to a security guard and some other people from the uh, conference. And when I looked up, I saw the um, plane, and the woman standing next to me said, Linda, you have the camera. Take the picture, which I did. And um, that was right before the Pentagon was hit. So um, that started a scramble. And why I bring this up is because this started a scramble in the street but people weren't um, trying to run over each other. Or well, let me, let me, before, so you were outside, you saw this plane go over. You happened to take a picture of it. There was subsequently a book written called The 9-11 Mystery Plane, which that was uh, referencing the plane you took a picture of. Right. And you say that was not the same plane that hit the Pentagon some short time later. Right. But... Uh, why, why did this plane draw your attention at all? We've all seen planes flying over. Why did you bother to take a picture? Because it was in restricted um, space and airspace. Meaning that in Washington, D.C., they don't allow jets to fly directly over the White House, directly over the Capitol. Or any of the um, statues or anything like that. So um, we knew that that was unusual. And then right after that... Like I said, um, the Pentagon was hit. People started moving. To a certain extent, was a scramble because there had been like four or five buildings right around there emptied out. And so you can imagine how many of us were in the street. It was getting very crowded. Well, and, and I should back up to say um, the Pentagon was hit after the World Trade Towers were hit. Yes. When you were at the White House, did you know at that point of the attack in New York? No. What we knew was that when we walked out of the White House, we saw um, the side lawn there. The, um, there's a patio or something where newscasters come to interview the president, and that was being set up. And so as we're walking by, it's like so... Wow, what's going on? Well, we soon discovered that our cell phones, anybody that was east of the Mississippi, we found out later, their cell phones were immediately cut off. As And then later, anybody west of the Mississippi River, their cell phones were cut off. So the group that I was with, some of us were able to make calls to try to figure out what was going on. But up until then, business was going on as usual. So um, it wasn't until the sighting of the airplane and the hitting of the... I mean, we started talking about, oh my gosh, 
you know, the towers have been hit, but like I said, we're still going on into our meetings and things just like we would have normally done. And then everything changed after we were evacuated. So when you were first at the White House for your meeting, did you not did you know at that point that it was a terrorist attack no. in here? No. In fact, when we were at the White House, that was early in the morning, and it was just a tour. And so that was on your, I mean, this was with a group. We came out, and as we were walking by, like I said, we noticed they were setting up on this uh, grassy patio-like area and just kind of talking amongst us what was going on. Some of us realized that we had no uh, cell phone. Um, like I said, but we figured out later that it was all of us on the east side of the Mississippi. And so those on the west side, I mean, who still had, uh, of the Mississippi, who still had phone service, found out that the towers had been hit. And so they were telling us. Did you think when you were, I mean, you, since the fact that you were at the White House, first of all, the distance between the White House and the Pentagon is a number of miles. It yes. might it might be eight miles. Did you hear the plane strike the Pentagon? I mean, when you were that far away, did you physically hear it? Or no, what we saw was the smoke. And so, I mean, we didn't see the smoke immediately um, because we were so many of us were focused on the plane in the air. And I honestly made the comment, is it better to be under the rubble or on top of the rubble? Because at that time, you're just like out here in the open. And then the Pentagon was hit. We turned around when people started scattering. We saw the smoke, and some of the guys actually ran towards the Pentagon. I mean, you can't get to the Pentagon because there's a major highway there. But... Um, all the businesses shut down. Everybody was moving out. Um, you couldn't find a, um, you could still use landlines. And I had a luncheon set up with Senator Durbin's office uh, that day for our group. And um, they called me to leave a message that there would not be a luncheon that day, um, which I thought was very considerate at them, but at the same time kind of comical that, you know, I wouldn't have figured that out. Um, we did. Did you, when you were at the White House, did you, did anyone start to go, well, we might be standing right here next to a target? No, no, because this was way before, um, not way before, but it was definitely um, moments, hour, a couple hours, maybe an hour before, because we were there like at, Eight eight o'clock in the morning. We were one of the first tours in, so like I said, we came out and then. And where were you? Were you were you able to get back to where you were staying, or were the streets yes. just packed with people on foot then because everyone was letting go of the employees and closing down? You have to understand that if anybody knows me, I would not ever take a direct route back. But the woman who I was with, we had to. Um, go find her brother, who was also in Washington, D.C., and um, we reached him first, and then we headed back to the hotel where we were staying. And um, Washington, D.C. was basically shut down, and um, everybody was talking. We watched on TV a lot of what was going on. Um, we were all using landlines to call home and let our families know that we were okay. Um, now, I, the, the other thing is, as you said, they shut down then all the air flights in the entire nation. I presume you flew to Washington. Um, how long before you could get back to Springfield, and how did you manage to get back? I um, rented a car from a, um, a friend of mine who um, lived in the area. He... Um, managed to get us to an airport that had a car rental that we could bring back to Illinois, but that wasn't until, like, I think Friday night, and we drove straight back. 
But um, during that time, we were in the hotel, and um, they all said, well, you can go outside if you want. You don't have to stay in here. But if you walked outside, it was very, very dark because the lights were all off. And... Was that right? This, they, they turned the street lights off? Yes. And you could not walk two steps without finding that you had um, someone from the armed forces right there with machine guns and everything else. And you get out and you take a few steps more and you realize this is not, I think I'll go back to the hotel and be cooped up. So um, in the days that followed, um, there was one day that I stayed and walked around with another couple that was at the conference. And like I said, the whole experience was, was, was very surreal. Picking up newspapers um, with the headlines, of course, but nobody's walking the streets. Um, we, it was just like um, something that a force had come through and nobody was there. We were the left. We were the people left, if that is a good description. And then I ended up, um, a friend of mine whose brother worked for the Department of the Aging, Aging, he came and got me and took me to his place to, to stay until Friday evening when we were able to get a car to come back. What do you think now, 15 years later, when you think back to those days? Uh, do they seem surreal? Does it seem like it was not 15 years ago, or how, what, what are your reflections? I, st I still think of um, what could have happened that didn't happen, how um, lucky all of us were, that something that, you know, that it was, I mean, I think it's horrendous that it hit the Pentagon, but still I'm thinking how much worse it could have been. Um, I just think of all the many people that were in the streets, had they chosen the street rather than the Pentagon. Um, even, like I said, I just think that we were all very, very lucky that day. All right. Thanks for joining us.